Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, and we've got uh, still an extended break. We're in April, but we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel. But it's still a good time to check in with our Elite Series pros and see what they're doing. So I want to check in with one of our Michiganders, one of the guys who has a, a Bassmaster win on his resume, and that is one other than Chad Pipkins, one of the best smallmouth fishermen on the Elites. Chad, how are you doing up there uh, in Michigan with the family during this break? We're doing good, man. I mean, we're, we're actually doing great. We're doing as good as we could be considering the uh, circumstances, but life is good here and it's moving on. Lots to do. Uh, I don't know what we'd be doing if we were fishing now, but I hope we can start figuring that out soon because we are ready to get back at it. <laughs> well, I know that a lot of the Elite Series is probably the same sentiment among the fans, the staff, the anglers. We all want to oh go fishing. God, we didn't want to miss yeah, the oh Ufala, the Chickamauga, the Santees of the world where they were timed because they're great timing. But this does give you an opportunity oh to be God. home with the family. You do have a, a, a newborn oh, with you and, and, and your wife uh, taking care of her there. So it's got to be good to spend Please some time with the family on a time oh, that no. you normally don't get to at oh, home. My God. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously a little bittersweet because we love to fish. That's what we do for a living. We want to get out there and in some of the places that were on the schedule were phenomenal for that timing. But it's just, it's been kind of special to me. I mean, I obviously have got one child now and the, the baby is only young once. So it's one of those deals where we're on the road so much that I'm sure I, I definitely would have missed some of those moments now. I mean, I've been home, I think, almost six weeks now and it's six weeks I'm home. Like I'm still doing a little work, you know, around the house. We actually just closed on a house right we did a, uh, what was it, a garage or a, a trunk closing for our quarantine the day when Michigan shut down and we closed on our house. So I had a few weekends where I was moving stuff in here, painting up the old house, like we're unpacking. We've just had a ton of things going on. And on top of that, I get to wake up every day, you know, eat breakfast with my wife and, and spend some time with the baby. And she's uh, she's the new personal best now. When we started this quarantine, she was still the personal best, but less than that, you know, 8, 10 at Lake Fork. And now... She's like 12 pounds, so she's getting big quick. <laughs> That's a lot, a lot of good news and a lot of changing things for you. Obviously, it looks like you've gotten some kind of an office man cave set up, showing off all your trophies. I'm envious over here. Like everybody wants bass, uh, bass fishing trophies. Uh, talk to me about that win. Back in the day, you're open um, right down the road from where you live, you know, probably a place that you're pretty familiar with, and you're a great smallmouth fisherman uh, in general. So that win, what did it do for your career, jumping you uh, to where you are now? Yeah, it was really how my, you know, I kickstarted my career. I mean, it, it, when, when you first start off, you make the Elite Series, it's a huge accomplishment itself because there's so many people that are trying to get to that, you know, that upper level of fishing. And it just, it takes, some people it takes five, ten, it, some people it doesn't happen, you know, just, so just to get to that level is the big thing. But the next important step of that level is getting there and staying there, you know, making sure you're able to support a family, have a living. I mean, I, I lived at home until I was 30 to make sure that I, nobody was dependent on me besides me. And, uh, you know, now having a wife and a family, it's important that you help, you know, support them. So that win for me kind of got my oh, career going, God. you know, not that I'm super well known or anything, but it really it made me make my first Bassmaster yeah, Classic, sure. which is huge. And then it, it, it sheds some light on, you know, opening some sponsor doors and and really maybe it draws some attention to get people to, to look at you a little Please. bit, you know, because it, it takes a lot to win for sure. And uh, I was fortunate enough the year after that, you know, I had one of my best years at, at uh, I think I had five or six top tens that year and three of them were on the, on the Elite Series. I made the Angler of the Year Championship, made the class again, and that's when things started to click for me sponsor-wise. I really feel like in our industry, you know, a lot of people think you make the Elite Series and every door is just opened and magical light bulbs and everybody's like, here's money, boats, trucks, deals. And it just, you know, it just doesn't happen like that. Or at least it, it didn't for me. And uh, for me, it was just, it's about that continual work and uh, keeping moving forward. And that's kind of how it happened. And after that win and that next classic, like that really, you know, I think it showed some sponsor people like, okay, he, he might be one that's here to stay a while and, you know, we can invest some time and some money in this, in this guy and, and, you know, we can, we can make it work. And so for me, it just, it kind of got, it turned it from a dream to, to a business, you know, and it, it took that next step where I was able to say, hey, I can make money. Oh, black, I can make money and have a living doing this if I work hard at it. Well, Chad, nuts. and it's not all—it's not Daddy, always ups. We know one. that in bass fishing, it's ups and downs. Some. In life, it's ups Damn. and downs. But for you, you do have a little bit of a niche. You got the one of the best uh, heads of hair on the Elite Series. It's looking—I'd uh, say—if if I can critique it, a little rough during the quarantine, but I like it. You you rock it. Um, but with yeah. those ups and downs, Chad. Uh, you're one of the guys who stays fishing. You fish the Opens, you fish the Elite Series, and for a few years there, you needed that uh, Open schedule. You were one of the guys that was near that cutting point, and you were still getting traction in the Elites, and you were able to keep yourself qualified. You were able to do well in the Opens, get top fives every single year in the points race there. 
for you, is that something that, that you need living up in Michigan, fishing tournaments more often, fishing as many as you can? Those nine elites or, or whatever are great, but adding in four more opens or adding in uh, two opens divisions, does that keep you sharp and keep you doing what you need to do on the elite series? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, you can't be a professional athlete just playing the games. And, and if you just fish the elite series, especially if you live up north, it's like you're being a pro football player, basketball player, you're just showing up for the games. I mean, I don't have the luxury to be able to fish year round up here and, and practice everywhere and just hone skills. I mean, I work hard doing other business stuff to try to set up life, but it, it doesn't help me in the fishing world. So for me, the opens have been a huge, huge player. I, mean, I enjoy it and I'm getting close to transferring mm -hmm like my success from the opens to the elite yeah, series. Cause there is, obviously we fish some of the uh, similar lakes that I'm more familiar with, but a big part of that is just getting comfortable with decision-making. I mean, in the, in the last six years in the opens, I think I won the points twice. I finished fourth, fifth, sixth, ninth, and 11th, like just amazing finishes. And I have yet to really bring that over to the next level. And, and I do, I think the big thing is just, I fish more confident at those levels. And um, these past, I think two or three years ago, they went to that Eastern series. And um, that was the year I was actually gonna fish both divisions because I knew I needed to fish earlier in order to get my season rolling. So what I did is that Eastern series, when it started, we started in January. I'm able to get down to Florida and kind of get things going. And that, that's been a big help for me. It just, it gets the decision-making oh, process stay going stay and it gets, on. it's, it gets those, you know, your brain roll. I mean, it's, it's totally different to just go out and fish versus to be in that tournament and make those game day decisions. Cause that's the guys that are great are the guys that makes those decisions. So you got to get accustomed to that. And for me, that's been a huge success, you know, getting into the opens and doing that more. And to be honest, that's what's going to be really unique about this year is, you know, I fished the open, we got our season started, felt like I got the kinks out of it, two good finishes to start, and now we're rolling, but then we've halted. You know, I haven't, we're not even allowed to fish in Michigan right now. So I'm at home, you know, chomping at the bit, bit but you can't go out and work on tackle. You can't fish in a pond that's gonna make you ready for that tournament. So I'm really curious how, how we're gonna get rolling. It's like starting a new year. So hopefully I can get down before the next event and at least fish a little two, three days somewhere to kind of get, uh, you know, to knock the cobwebs, cobwebs off and get rolling. And that's one thing. I talked to Seth Fighter on one of these uh, Elite Series Skypes. I've talked to some Woo! other Northern anglers, and that's what they say. They knocked the rust off. Well, now it's going to be two sets of rust uh, because after the Classic with this break. Um, but for you, you mentioned stay it. Stay on, you get it rolling go, in January and whatnot, and a lot of Elite Series anglers wish that they could get on a hot streak. Gosh, There's a lot that just, there, that, you know, they ride the middle of the line or they're, they struggle and they get it. to the check line. They struggle, they get oh, to the check my, line. For you, here? though, you on move? some of these years that you've been Can close to the Classic or you've snuck into it, you maybe oh, Lord, haven't started now. that great, but when you started putting it together, your second half oh. of the seasons, it's up there with AOI wow. caliber and it's dug you out of the, the basement. So on, that baby. does speak to that consistency of fishing, getting out on the water and, and just staying in tune with where the fish are going throughout the year. Yeah, and it's just, it's more just getting <laughs> mentally ready and staying, keeping your brain tuned to make those decisions as the year goes on. And it's crazy because you said it right, right on the head. I mean, the last few years, I've had a broken wrist, a broken collarbone, and just had a lot of weird things happen. But I've actually started the years very well. But then it's just been in the middle. I've, I've done okay. I've, you know, I've finished, made the AOI the last two years, made the Classic, just missed it the year before. Um, but prior to that, I would always finish so strong. I just had like two or three really rough starts. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I told myself this was the year where it's gonna, it's gonna come together and I'll be curious how it plays out because it is it's I think the year in 15 I finished 25th but I finished the last four events like winning what you'd win the second half of the year angle of the year I finished third fourth fifth and like 20 something but it's uh it's it's not a half a season year it's it's a full year and it, that's why the guys that win that man hats off to them because you can't make mistakes I mean you gotta you gotta bring your game every event Good. So it was a great year for you last year, making the Bassmaster Classic for this year and whatnot. Uh, one of the reasons that you had a great year was that mid-season pick-me-up at Lake Fork. We got to watch that back last Friday on the Bassmaster Live Rewind. We got to watch the morning of day two and the afternoon of day three, three for that live production. What an incredible day for you on day one, but what an incredible day two morning for you. You've got that moment. It, it's something I'll never forget, the new personal best. Man, it's just special. I mean, on day one, I had uh, 32 pounds, or just under 32 pounds. 
And that was the best day I've ever had of my life. And then to have cameras and have video stuff and to go out on day two and literally have the same thing happen. It was a lot more of a flurry on day two, like it happened pretty quick. I mean, it's just special because I've got some of the greatest videos, greatest shots of that. And like a lot of times that might happen, but maybe you're in practice and you got to back off or maybe it's just a fun day of fishing with your friends. But to actually have that in an event and happen to have that in an event where you've got camera people on you. So I've got records of that stuff for the rest of my life. Like I've got cool pictures, videos. I mean, it was just, it was super special. I mean, it was amazing to get, I caught the two biggest bags of my life back to back and, you know, caught the biggest bass of my life and. Then I dropped the ball and just blacked out on day three. But it happens. I still thought I made the right decision. Just, you know, it was a little unlucky. And, uh, man, I'm pumped to go back to that place because it is special. <laughs> well, that, that iconic new personal best will live, with us, will live with us forever. Even though you've topped that since then, I believe you topped it, like, basically a week or two later at Lake Chickamauga for an open. I think you almost caught a 10-pounder there. It was like 9.15 or something like that. So for you, breaking that personal best again is awesome. But that Lake Fork event, we're coming back up to it. And if it plays out like it's supposed to, we will be there in June, hopefully. What are your thoughts about that event and how it might be different from the early May Lake Fork that we had last year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be more consistent because the fish were really in transition last year. And I really thought on day one, I, I thought I was going to catch some sight fish. And I shook off over 30 pounds of sight bass on the last day of practice. And that storm just messed them up. I only had a couple of places in that mid-depth, you know, where those fish were coming and going. So that was just something that kind of fell into place. I think when we get there in June, you know, there's always fish shallow, but the bulk of the fish are going to be off the bank. And the difference now, instead of having, you know, 10 guys doing it, there's going to be, you know, 90% of the field. So it's going to be one of those where if you find them, there, there's definitely going to be more guys that find the same fish. Um, but that's, that's how it is sometimes. It's still timing. I mean, I had some of the right places. They were there, and they just didn't bite sometimes, you know. So it's, it's still going to be the guy that, you know, not only finds the right places, but – you got to show up at the right time um, with the right presentation to get those fish to fire sometimes. So here's the question. Everybody wants gotcha. to know, is it day one of practice? Is it day one of the day. tournament? When is Chad Pippins going to go check that spot? Because 60 plus yeah. pounds after two days, you've got to check it, even if the conditions are different, just to see. So <laughs> when are you going to, when are you going to check it? Have you thought about that yet? Yeah, for sure. And the funny thing is that on day one, I only weighed one bass from there. You know, I actually caught most of my fish in another place. So I'll definitely check those places. I'll probably wait for day two to roll up on those. I mean, everybody saw a couple of the, one of the places that I caught them on day two, but just one of those, like it's just a sneaky little place. And it's one of those where I still feel like if you roll up at the right time and maybe if you spend five minutes, you might catch a big one, but it's definitely not the typical place where they should be in the summer. So it'll be worth checking, but I'm not, no, I'm just not holding, not holding my breath too much. on catching them there. Well, it's obviously uh, history can bite you, but it's whether it happens or not on those spots in 2020, you can always say it happened in 2019 there. Now, as we segue uh, from one heavyweight event at Lake Fork to some possible ones, I'm going to ask you this question. When will we break the century mark for four days of fishing on a smallmouth only tournament? We've been so close in the past. Sure. If we did, if we did Lake St. Clair for four days last year, it would have probably totaled that. So will it happen in 2020? 100 pounds smallmouth. Uh, it, I mean, it is so tough. I really think like there was the perfect storm last year with what Seth was doing on St. Clair. And it was the perfect timing where they start to get big. I mean, to break the 100 pound club for smallmouth is like breaking the 120 club for largemouth. I really think like a 30 pound bag of largemouth is like a 25 pound bag of smallmouth. So, I mean, how many times has the 120 bag been broken? Only a couple times, I think, in bass history. So, it's possible. Uh, the, the fish, I've, you know, I've got buddies over there. Garrett's been out there and stuff. And I know, like, there's some giants being caught, but just so many things have to be right, not just now, but all summer long with the bait. Because you can't just have a few five pounds. I mean, you literally have to have so many five to seven pounders out there swimming around to bust that 100 pound mark. And it's possible. I mean, it's the end of the year. They're, they're going to be grouped up. If you get on the right group, I mean, it could happen this year. I mean, like, the fish are healthy. And uh, as long as we're able to fish and get out there, like, it's, it's possible. So for you, you're a smallmouth guru, whether it's St. Clair, whether it's the St. Lawrence River, whether it's even Lake Champlain, probably. What would be the bait? 
that you break right. 100 pounds on. If you could only have one bait for a smallmouth fishery in that July, August time period, is it going to be a crankbait? Is it going to be a drop shot, a Ned rig, a tube, a, a swim bait? What does Chad Pipkins think that 100 pound, if you caught 20 smallmouth on Skinny. one bait, what would that be, that bait that breaks the record? I'm throwing a DC 300 from Demiki. I have that's what I won my open on. Every single bass I weighed came in that, and um, it's just a bait I got a lot of confidence in. Uh, yeah, the big thing is fish. that time of year, what depth <laughs> of the fish going to be in? Last year they were up shallower because yeah, we were there a little later. Yeah, but... I think they're going to be out a little deeper on St. Clair when we get back. So maybe that bait won't play as much, but obviously a drop shot. I mean, if you're smallmouth derbies, you had to have one bait with you and you didn't know what depth the fish were going to be in, it's out. hard to beat the drop shot because they're going to bite it from two feet down to 62 feet. So it's just one of those where Stay you better on, have one tied on. Well, it was on, a great man. conversation. Thank you for joining us, uh, Chad. It's good to, to jump in and talk to, our, to, talk to our Elite Series guys. Easy for me to say. Uh, hopefully we get to see you on camera in the Bassmaster Elite Series on Bassmaster Live when we get the season started up. Get Tell your you wife we said happy belated fish. birthday to her. She just had a birthday last week. And, uh, and take wow. care of your family until we see you out on the uh, Elite Series trail. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That was Chad Pipkins, Elite Series Pro, making classics, winning opens. Chad's one to watch, especially on the smallmouth swing. But hey, I'd keep an eye on him when we go down to Texas, that Lake Fork area. He obviously had 60 plus pounds uh, in two days there, and it should be a fun event when we get started back up.